Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. I had a number of bids in on some really nice laptops to try and repair, but I lost every single one of them. So the best I could do was get these motherboards. I paid somebody 100 euros for these four motherboards, which are all not powering on. So we're gonna take them one by one over the next few weeks. And we're gonna start with this one right here. So this is a motherboard for a HP 250G7, and it's not powering on. So let's get it onto the screen and see if we can work out what's wrong with it. The first thing I did with this motherboard was to carry out a quick visual inspection. Now if I zoom in, you can see that this is pretty clean. Isn't it? However, when I came to the section with the Super I.O., you can see here there is evidence of a spill. I got my toothbrush and some alcohol and cleaned that section off and through the magic of Photoshop I can show you how that looked afterwards. Now I've removed the dirt and the liquid that was there beside that IC but that doesn't necessarily mean that I have removed the fault and a lot of times what I've found in the past is if there's a spill that can lead to a short so I don't want to just bring power to this board without first checking for shorts. On the other side of the board, we can see all of these secondary inductors that are on our secondary power rails. So what I want to check is to see if any of these are coming up as short. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, we introduce the multimeter in diode mode. I place my red probe to ground, and then I'm going to check around all of the inductors with my black probe and see what we're reading, starting off with PL301. So I place my black probe to PL301, and I find that it measures 0 0.000. Okay, so that's obviously a bad start. We were reading a short at this inductor PL301 right here. But I decided to just keep reading around all of the inductors and see if this is the only shorted inductor or if there are others. So PLB1, I found that that measured 0 0.540. PLG1 measures 0 0.006. Uh, PLZ1 and PLZ2 measuring 0 0.004. This one here, PLA1, was measuring 0 0.03. PL302 was measuring 0 0.000. There's two more. PL1001 is measuring 0 0.000. And finally, PLM1 is measuring 0 0.156. So that's them all. So I'm sure we can all agree at this point that the prospects of a repair here are not looking good. What I'm reading is we have a short at PL301, we have a short at PL302, and we have a short at PL1001. Now these could all be shorted back through the same component, or possibly we have shorted components on those three separate rails. So having confirmed that we do have a short on the board, I had a more detailed look at the board and I found that this IC appears to have a hole in it. This is the audio chip and as you can see in the top right there is a hole. So I decided to remove this IC and hopefully we get rid of the short. So I doused that audio IC in a bit of flux and heated it with my hot air station and it eventually came off it put up a good fight after removing the audio IC I took the diode mode readings around all of those inductors again but unfortunately they remain the same. We still have our three shorted rails PL301, PL302 and PL1001. Removing that IC made no difference. I continued to carry out a visual inspection of the board but I was unable to identify any other damaged components. So I decided to go straight to voltage injection and I decided to start with PL1001. So we know already that we are measuring short here so what I decided to do was to remove this inductor completely and then establish which side it was that was short and it was this side here 
that I measured 0, 0.000 volts in diode mode. So it is here that we need to inject. And let me show you how I set that up. To inject voltage, I introduce my DC power supply. I connect my black wire to ground and my red wire to the pad where I detected the short. So we're going to start the voltage low as usual. So we're going to set the voltage to 1 volt and start with a current limit of 100 milliamps and bring it up in steps of 100 milliamps. And unfortunately, as I started to raise the current, the only components on the motherboard that was heating up was a chipset. So this motherboard is dead. So the first of our boards is a non-repair. I have three more motherboards from that batch that you saw at the start of the video. I'm going to pick another one of those for next week's video and we'll try and fix that. Please like and subscribe and if you have any comments put them down in the comments field below. I'll see you next week.